what do I mean through that? You know, let's say you know, let's say that I want to create um, some sort of do we here. Okay, um, we could do it like this, right? I forgot how to use the symmetry. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, could turn on symmetry here. Um, on object X, let's say. So let's say that I, when I select these, can you know, come here, right? And then extrude. And let's say that you know that I want the thickness of, I don't know, um, zero point five. You know, uh, to to be sure that you know it's symmetrical on both sides, on both x and y. Okay, I'm gonna use this contact minimum. I never used this stuff before though. Uh, it can come here. It changed to y. Yeah, as you can see, it should be clicking. Oh, no, no, my apologies. It's, I think it's the Z. Yeah, it's the Z. Then what you can do is you can go here and extrude once again, and you put the same thickness 0 0.5, right? Yeah, yeah, here we go. I have a different sort of base mesh. And then, but what, what would me, you know, difference would this make? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. You can, you know, put this like this. Let's say that, um, put on side here, right? And then, you know, change it like this. What you can do is you can come here, select faces. Oh yeah, let me turn off symmetry. You can click these, and then, you know, shift click these, and then extrude, and then you keep up the subdivisions. And what you do is you come here to what's his name, but I think this is Molly Two Kid. Yeah, okay, you can come here to extrude face. Hmm, that's weird. Wait a minute. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, because we extrude more than one side, right? And same generates different nodes. Okay, so this is the node that I generally extruded throughout this. Then what I can do is I can go to taper like this. And then once you hit uh, preview, there you go. It's pretty cool. Um, but what you could have done though is maybe I should have added more thickness here because there's not much of a crease here, but you can change that by adding instead of 0 0.5 thickness. If you want to try, you could, you know, add more. And you could always, you know, see the twist here. Oh, look at that. That's pretty beautiful. And you could always, you know, later on, uh, I'm not going to show it here, but you could always, you know, reset the taper to one and then keep tapering, you know, manually throughout the taper curve here, as I showed before. And you can have, you know, more control over your your curve and then you know do something like this and then you could uh i wouldn't you know put edge loops here otherwise they will look you know really square looking like this and i don't think that's a desired desirable effect but you could you know also put some let me see what happens when I put edge loops here, here, whoops, here, and yeah, let me see what happens. Hmm, interesting. It, it is interesting. Well, once you put in your model, you could always, you know, extrude this a little bit more. And, you know, so you could plug this inside some, let's say, uh, character head, you know, uh, hide this inside the head or something. You could always do something like that. But, you know, the, it looks really interesting this year. And, you know, remember that, yeah, let me hide this for a little more, a moment. Remember, it doesn't have to be, you know, all primitives. You could, you know, create your own models as well. For example, let me see if I can make something. You know, I could start with a plane. Up here, you know, 
Should have been changed this a little bit. No, but four, I guess. And then, you know, four on, on which I need side. And then, you know, come, could come here to top. And it could, you know, taper with this, um, with these shapes. And let me see, let me show you me in like a couple of few seconds. <clears throat> okay, as you can see here, uh, kind of, you know, did some heart shaped polygon. You know, I'm going to, but before working with it, you know, once you, you know, jump, you know how, what happens when you smooth it up. You know, have, you know, Molly took you here, the symmetry on for object X. You could, you know, make a lot of crazy stuff, you know. Um, go change this here. Maybe you could put another one here. So, let's see, do that. You could do this at ah, the center. Okay, and then once you're done, let me change a little bit more here and here. Hmm, weird. Well, let's say that you know you have a proper difference here. You could always come here. With these, these, and then press Control E, extrude. So it's not a completely 2D shape. It has depth now, right? Then you can come to side view. Whoops. And then do this. You know, I could show it like this, and then work uh, the same thing here, and then you could, could do something like this, right? Okay, all you can do is let me sh uh, turn off the symmetry. I guess could could do something like this. No, no, something like this, right? And then this is the same thing. You know, to select these faces to speed up the process. Select this and extrude. Oops. What? Oh, fuck. I mean that. And then do divisions. There you go. And then what you can do is you can come here once again, find the exact extrusion, and then you can taper, right? And then you have here, you know, all sorts of possible differences. As you can see, it's a somewhat of a hard shape here, I guess. You could, you know, add some more, before extruding, you could add more here, but I'm not gonna do, you know, go too much into this tutorial. The video is already kind of long, to be honest. And then, you know, you can twist this. Give it a nice twirl. And find something like this. All right. Now, once you're done with everything, what you want to do is you want to come here to your liner, right? Let's say that, you know, for example, let's pick up a random horn. Let me hide this one. I'll pick up this one. Yeah, let's let's pick up this one. I guess you know a previous one that I did. You can come here, file, export selection, then select the place that you want to put. And for for example, we're gonna put it here on desktop. I guess call it as a test. And then after that, you could come to ZBrush, or have, you know, I already have it right here, right? But I don't think he's why I put it here. And then what you can do is you can come here to press B, actually first press after frame, then you can come to press B and Click create serve brush. It's going to ask, uh, should you put this mesh as an insert mesh to the standard brush? And say no, we go to new. And then uh, there you go. 
then you can click here reply like this and let's say for example that I don't know that you know uh, I want to let, let's say that this had this fears I had for a moment I could always oops that's not the symmetry you could always pull like this and rotate these folks on and you know put it like this for example and there you go you have a pretty good set of horns so yeah it's pretty much the tutorial and then you know what you can do after that is you can do a um, come here to for example poly groups auto groups actually you know just do a, you can split this right group split then you have to choose sub tools and then you can come here right let me hide these what you can do is I uh, these don't have much detail as you can see I think I forgot to put yeah I forgot to put uh, the freaking stuff here but it's much quicker if you have your you know create your set of horns like that tend to pick up a sphere you know keep shaping it up at the end if you want to detail this more you know sometimes you want your your horns to be simple you know something like this but some other some other times you want you know something let me show you my my uh a really good horn brush that i got for example some sometimes you want something to be more detail like this gray horn brush here right but you know it's uh, it has much more detail. So what we can do after that is can all, could always come here to Dynamesh, Dynamesh this up. But yeah, do some uh, some divisions, you know. And then you know you can sculpt this on your for your heart's content. You know you can come here to clay. You can crease these. Oops, not so much like this. Yeah, the sky's the limit. Pretty much what you can do, you know, through this workflow here. All right, <clears throat> not that, you know, I made all these sets. Oh gosh, that's this a lot of fucking horns. Uh, uh, what we can do is we can pretty much export the selection, right? Let me export these. Uh, sport selection, right? Uh, also, let me see here. Yeah, make sure that I don't have any curves, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to select any. Yeah, let me let me hide this curve. I, I'm not sure if it could cause any trouble, but you know, just to be sure. Then can come here actually let me do selection again okay <clears throat> the selection is here again go to file export selection make sure you put in a folder because if you do don't I think it's gonna get all unorganized so let me put do something here I'm gonna create a paste here Horns OBJ and export. I'm going to put all of them here. Oh, wait. So this is a single OBJ. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know that. Okay, horns, I guess. Then, yeah, pretty much exported. Let me see the file. Yeah, pretty much it's quite so back to ZBrush, right? What you can do now is yeah, just a minute. Okay, uh now what you can do is you can delete these, come here, and then import. Okay. Come here, horns, LBJ horns. And then what you're gonna have is a bunch of horns here. 
what you can do is if you turn on wireframe you will see that despite being all matched together they are still they still have their own topology meaning they are different objects so what you can do is you can come here to poly groups and you know tackle out auto groups and it should make out of them a par then what you can do here is you can do a group split and then what it should be ended up with is all these horns holy shit there's so many of them and then you are actually gonna end up with is let me change the material to maybe skin shape you end up with a lot of different horns after made made couple of them you know and after you're done with all of them let's say that for example this one what it can do is you can press b create insert mesh the brush the current brush not a brush you can you know create a new one then insert mesh then you can you know do that but in order for you to make sure that this brush is there you, can, you need to come here to brush and then save as and then you save the the brush I'm gonna call this horn um, sorted horns and then it's going to be there right now let's say that for example I close this up and you know get a new tool and I'm gonna do this right now because I'm going to make all these horns into a single brush but you could go there right and what, what you can do is uh, you, you can pick up the brush save file okay let me do this right here for example come here sorter horns and let's say I copy this and then I put to the um, right I could put here to like see brushes or I have a horns one could come here and paste this up here and then once I go to for example press comma and go to brush and then go for horns it's gonna be right here it's sort of horns don't know if there's a limit of how many brushes you can you know put there so yeah, that's pretty much it about, you know, the tutorial and the such. Oh yeah, but one last thing, I almost forgot that. Um, before you turn this into a mesh, there is one important detail that you need to do. Um, you need to put all these in size, for example, some are on similar sizes, but some others are much bigger, like this. So what you wanna do is, you make all of them visible. Then you go here to a Z plugin, transpose master, T pose mesh. This is gonna pick all the sub tools, put them the lowest subdivision level, all right? And then create uh, this thing here. Then what you do is you can come here to, I think uh, it is on deformation. Yes, then you go to the unify. And everything should be on its, you know, correct size, I guess. Or maybe not. Uh, you know what? Actually, you need to do that by hand, I guess. I don't think there's a, a quick way to do this stuff. Where is it? Let me see. Mm, uh, no, I don't think there is. Yeah, uh... E Usually won't be a problem, but considering these have so many things, so what you what you want to do is click here on Unify, other size object. Click here, here, and then what you're gonna do is this is gonna put everyone in a specific size, a two X Y Z two size more or less. This one, for example, um, they're kind of right, yeah, but some, sometimes they're not, you know, see here, we can click here on Unify, 
and then it should do okay uh, I'm going to skip up this right and unify all of these horns <clears throat> all right with all the things done what I made is uh, I successfully made a brush out of this and there's an easier way to do that what I did was I created a new brush create a new one create a new and then once you create a new you can create insert multi mesh. Actually, it's quite static. You can just create and insert multi mesh, which will create an insert mesh from all your sub tools and then create this, right? Put all of them together here. And with that, it means that you could, uh, you can like just press M for your keyboard and then you can select which one to press. Then, for example, this here. Can totally put this here, and with that much, what you can do is edit brush credits and, and here click here, enter your name. Uh, made by me, right? My name, then click here, enter your favorite uh, world web, wide web, I guess. Uh, okay, um, you can, you know. Do a. Um, we're gonna pull up this brush for free, probably in case you don't want to make these horns or you want to, you know, use these works for your creations. And with that, I say, please consider buying this brush for one dollar, or you know, or something, or the price you think you think fair. It would be really appreciated, you know, for that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much for watching this video. All right, have a nice day and bye.